What's up YouTube and welcome to a new video. So last year I made this video over here with the title why now is the best time to buy a Ferrari California. After all, one year ago the cheapest Californias were going for $75,000 and the price forecast showed that the future depreciation would be minimal. Now of course, in the last year many sports and supercars went up in value and in this video I will show you if this also goes for the Ferrari California. And as always we will take a data driven approach. Yet before we have a look at the price change let's have a look at today's market. You can see that we have the mole year on the horizontal axis and the price on the vertical axis and that each car is represented by a bubble and that the black axis display the median price point for each model year. Now in total there are 133 Californias for sale and the median price is $125,000. And for this price you get a car with a mileage of 14,500 miles. Now then, as you can see, prices no longer start at $75,000. The cheapest car goes for $77,500, but this car doesn't have a clean title. Cars with a clean title start at around $80,000, but these are of course the cars with a relatively high mileage. At the other side of the graph you can see then that prices still can go up to $189,000. Yet for around $160,000 you can get a relatively fresh example. But what about the difference between the normal California and the California T? Let's have a look at that. The California T is of course the latest version and features among other things a redesigned exterior and a new engine. And as you would expect, this is reflected in the prices. The normal California has a median price of $110,000, whereas this is $155,000 for the California T. Or in other words, you need to pay a premium of $45,000 to get yourself into a California T. Whether that's worth it or not, I leave up to you. However, this premium is so high due to the high price for the cars in model year 2016 and 2017. If you look at the model years 2014 and 2015, then you can see that the premium between the two generations is around $6,000. And this in turn is not so much more than the price difference between the other model years. Alright, you know now how the current market looks, but the big question is of course here, how much did prices change over the last year? Let's have a look at that now and we will first have a look at the aggregated numbers and then dive into the details. The graph over here shows the price distribution for today's market and the market in March 2020. And as you can see, the orange one lays at the right hand side of the blue one. And this means that prices went up. They increased with $4,000 from $121 to $125,000. Or in other words, they went up with 3.3%. And that is an excellent score. Moreover, the score is statistically confirmed, showing us that it is unlikely the result of chance. It does then also show us that the price increase is carried across the market, as both the bottom end and the top end of the price distribution show an increase. Now, a possible explanation for this can of course be a change in the mileage. So let's have a look at the mileage distributions. In the orange one we have again the one for today's market and in the blue one the one for the market of March 2020. Now this graph shows us that most Californias were driven 4,100 miles during last year and that consequently the median mileage increased. And this of course means that both the price and the mileage went up over the last year. And therefore if you're buying a California right now you're likely to get less value for money than one year ago. But we're not yet done here. It might be so that this price increase is driven by a certain market segment. After all, the California T's are still a lot newer and therefore might be more susceptible to depreciation. It is worthwhile to investigate if this price increase is actually driven by the California market and not by the California T market. So let's do that now. Oh, and I forgot to say, we will do this both from a model year and a mileage perspective and we start with the model year perspective. The graph over here shows now the model year to price relationship for the California market. But before we look at the numbers, you need to know that supply decreased a lot. Last year there were 183 cars for sale and now only 52. So that is a big change. But now then, the numbers. As you can see, the orange line lays clearly above the blue line. So the first generation saw a price increase. Moreover, prices went up with an astonishing $10,000 and this price increase is statistically confirmed. However, there is a bit more to it than just this price increase. If you look for example at the cars from model year 2010, then it seems to be so that prices surged. Yet, you should also know that for this model year, the market composition changed. The cars which are currently for sale have a median mileage which is 3,500 miles lower 
than the cars one year ago. And the same goes for the cars from model year 2014. Now if we look then at the depreciation curve, then we can see that the forecast of depreciation didn't really change. Currently this sits at $6,500 or 5.2% per year, while last year it was 5.1% per year. And this confirmed our earlier observation that the complete market shifted up. Let's now figure out if this also goes for the depreciation per thousand miles. But before you do so, if you like this video, please support the channel by smashing that like button. Thanks. Now the graph over here displays the depreciation per thousand miles and you can then also see that we have now the mileage on the horizontal axis instead of the model year. When we look then at the curves, then we can see that just as for the depreciation per thousand miles driven, they are rather similar. Presently, a California loses thousand dollars per thousand miles driven or 0.8% while last year this was around $900 or also 0.8%. Now then, the price increase. If we look at this increase from a mileage perspective, then it appears to be so that the increase is larger for the low mileage cars than that it is for the high mileage cars. I mean, there are some low mileage cars which are now priced at $160,000. Yet, I think that this price increase is a bit exaggerated. Let's investigate this a bit closer with the following graph. We have now the dates on the horizontal axis, the price on the vertical axis, and the price increase for each mileage bucket in the graph. And now we can see that for cars with a mileage over 8,000 miles, the increase is quite consistent and sits between seven and $11,000. Yet, when we look at the cars under 8,000 miles, we can see a price increase of $23,000. This price increase is of course an overestimation of what actually happened here. And the reason for this is quite simple. In today's market there are only a few cars for sale with such a low mileage and the ones which are for sale are priced quite high. Therefore, I would count on an increase of seven to $11,000 and not $23,000. All right, we just saw that the price increase for the California market is quite severe. Prices went up with $10,000 and the increase goes for the complete market. Yet, if the California market went up with $10,000, what does this mean for the California T market? You guessed it, that is what we will find out now and we will repeat the previous exercise but then for the T market. We start again with the model year versus price graph. Now as you can see, also here there's a large decrease in supply. Last year there were 137 California T's for sale and now only 51. If we look then at the price change, then we can see that the numbers differ quite a bit from the California market. With an increase of $5,800, prices still went up, but a lot less. In model year 2015, we can even observe a small price decrease of $1,500. Yet, this is caused by a change in the market composition. The median mileage for cars in that model year increased with 11,000 miles. So you need to see this price decrease against that background. And then it is not so bad. Now then, the other model years. For cars from model year 2016 and 2017, we can see a clear price increase with seven and a half and five thousand dollars. And if we look then at the depreciation pattern, then we can see that it sits at eleven point two thousand dollars or six point eight percent per year. Both of these numbers are quite a bit higher than that they are for the California market. There it was six point eight thousand dollars and five point two percent. Also, you can see that the depreciation line is straight and that there isn't really a bottoming pattern like we could see in the California market. And with that, let's have a look at the depreciation per thousand miles. This graph namely gives a good visualization of what happened in the market. We can see now that there are no low mileage California tees for sale anymore. The median mileage in this market did then also go up with 4,000 miles. And that is a lot more than in the California market where the increase was only 630 miles. And naturally, this means that the price increase for the complete market is lower. Yet, if we make a more fairer comparison and look again at the price increase for each mileage bucket, then we can see that the price increase is carried across the market as prices for all mileages went up. You can see now that the price increases vary from seven and a half to fifteen and a half thousand dollars and relatively these increases are quite in line with the California market. Now if we go then back to the depreciation per thousand miles graph, then you can also see that there isn't a lot of change in the depreciation. Currently this sits at $1.5,000 per thousand miles or 0.9% and these are exactly the same numbers as one year ago. And also this confirms that the full market shifted up. Whew. All right, those were quite some graphs and quite some numbers. Let's summarize now and figure out how all of these numbers fit within the larger trend. 
we saw that prices for the California and the California tea market went up. The ones for the tea went up slightly less, but this is mainly caused by the differences in the mileage increase. Hence, it turned out that last year was indeed a good moment to buy a California. Yet, most likely, this price increase doesn't result from a sudden increase in popularity. Rather, it stems from a general price increase for sports and supercars. And if you want to know more about that, then I recommend that you click on the pop-up banner right over here. We will now continue by figuring out how the price increase in the California market relates to the price increase in some other car market. And we will do that with this graph. On the horizontal axis we have the cars and on the vertical axis we have the relative price change. Now if we find the California and the California T market, then we can see that there are large differences. The increase in the T market is in line with the increase which we saw in the V Advantage GT market and the 9S7 Turbo S market. The increase in the California market looks more like the one we saw in the 991 Carrera S market. And as we saw in the beginning of the video, the difference between the California and the California T market at the market level mainly arises due to a difference in the mileage increase. Nevertheless, values clearly went up. And as you can see, the magnitude of the increase fits within the market trend. Now then, if you made it till here in the video, there must be something about numbers which you love, and you might also be a bit concerned about the depreciation rate on a California. After all, it is likely that this price increase is just a temporary effect. Moreover, if you use the car for which it is made, driving, you will of course decrease the value. Let me therefore show you two alternatives which are a bit friendlier on the depreciation per thousand miles the F-Type and the LC500. Now I fully understand that a Jack and a Lexus don't have the same appeal as a Ferrari. And if you want the Ferrari, by all means go for the California. I'm just showing you two other cars which might be a lot friendlier on your wallet. The graph over here displays the mileage to price relationship for the F-Type, LC500 and California. Now first, you will see that the California is a lot more expensive and in some cases almost double the price. Yet, as mileage increase, the price difference becomes smaller. And the reason for this is that the absolute depreciation number is a lot higher for the California. It sits at $1,760 per thousand miles driven. For the F-Type and especially for the LC500, this is a lot lower. For the Jack, and I only included the R's here, it sits at $626. And for the LC500, it sits at $516. And especially the rate of the LC500 is quite good. You can already see a clear flattening of the curve after 20,000 miles. And that is even though that the car is still quite new. Now, if you want to know more about the F-Type or the LC500, then I recommend that you check out the full depreciation analysis for those cars. Now, I'll put the link to those videos down below in the description of this video. We will now wrap up and conclude. Prices in the California and the California T market went up, but this is perhaps not such a surprise. After all, it fits quite well within the larger market trend. Yet, I think that this is a temporary effect and that eventually the cars will start to follow their normal depreciation pattern. If we look then at that depreciation pattern, then we can see that for the full market, it is not the highest one, but it falls, generally speaking, in the upper range. Therefore, if you care about depreciation, it might be worthwhile to check out some alternatives. And with that, we arrive at the end of this video. Now, if you enjoy this data-driven way of analyzing cars, but would have liked to see the analysis for a different car, please comment the car for which you would like to see a video down below in the comment section. As always, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next week for a new video.